Hey guys. I don't know if anyone, oh, we do have some people here already, awesome. So I think we're gonna have between 10 or 12 people, maybe not everybody's gonna be tuning in right away, but I'll, um, I'll wait a few minutes just to make sure that everybody gets logged in and stuff before we get started. Um, hey, I'm Kate, for those of you that don't know me, I'm sure you all do by now. Um, and tonight I'm so excited because we're gonna make this super cute macrame wall hanger planter, which I'll put a plant in it so you can look at it. Oh, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Type uh, type yes and say hello in the comments and I can see them and answer you while, um, while we're doing our class. So that's the way that you can communicate with me. But yeah, look at this cutie. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is what we're going to be making tonight, and um, you guys have your own colors. I debated actually making a second one in this color today because I really, really love this rust color. It looks kind of crappy in this lighting, but um, I decided to go with something else just because I had some leftover string and I just wanted it to be, you know, good for the environment and not waste. So I'm going to take this one down. And I'm gonna put up my dowel. But um, just so you guys can get everything organized, I want you to take all your string out of its little wrapper that says how long it is. Um, make sure to keep them separate. The longer ones we're gonna use right away and then the shorter ones we're gonna use at the end. Um, make sure you have a pair of scissors close by. And yeah, I think that's it. Maybe actually find the little pot that you want to put in it, just so you can use that to, um, you'll figure it out later. But if you have a little pot that you know you want to put in it, go get it, have it on hand. Um, yeah, everybody can hear me and all that good stuff, I hope. <laughs> it's uh, kind of weird, like talking to you guys, but it feels like I'm talking to myself because, eh, I don't know, I have like this big light in front of me and it's just very weird. But anyways, this is a better setup than it was last time. Um, for those of you that were here for our last class, we did it in my RV and I had to get, I rigged up something. So this time I have a real wall to uh, hang on, which is good. Last time we, oh my gosh, it was crazy. But, and I also got some professional lighting this time, which helps a lot, I think, especially like right now it's still light out here. Um, but it does, it's gonna get dark soon. Um, so the light will help a lot once it gets dark. Hi, Pam. Um, yes, it will be available to view again. Um, I'll make it the whole class. You can rewatch, you know, fast forward, slow down, whatever. Um, I also made a condensed tutorial video that I'm going to share with you guys after the class so you can go back and you can make as many of these as you want as long as you have the stuff on hand um, but yeah so I'm going to send you guys an email with that after the class with the condensed version and blah 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 and uh, written instructions as well so yeah okay is everybody here I'm excited to get started are you guys excited Woohoo! okay I'm gonna have a drink of water. And then if we don't have anybody new. Oh, somebody else has shown up. Hello, I can't see who's here. But if you wanna say hi on the, uh, the chat, I can read what you're writing. Oh, I got my awesome bridesmaid cup. This thing is like amazing. It holds a whole liter of water, so it's good. I drink a lot of water. Hi, Rachel. I'm excited too. Um, okay, nine people. I'm gonna wait 30 more seconds. I think we're gonna have 10 tonight. Um, for those of you that have done macrame before, this might be a little bit easy for you. If you haven't done macrame before, don't worry, we're doing a beginner class, so we're gonna do step-by-step -step for everything, all the knots, all of that. Um, 
if you do want to go back and watch later or if you want me to slow down or if you need me to redo the steps, um, just let me know in the chat and I will do that. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited too. Let's get started. Okay. So first you're going to need to take one of the five foot strings. So I have mine off to the side over here. Um, I'm actually gonna bring you closer so you can see what I'm doing better. If you guys saw it on Instagram, <laughs> I just showed the behind the scenes here. It's kind of a kind of interesting when you have to do these things at home, right? Um, okay, so you should have 16 five foot strings and we're going to start off with one of those. And now you're gonna wanna fold it in half. So you make a little loop at the top like that. And the ends should be, let me see that, ends should be even. Okay. And now I have this dowel set up on the wall just for ease of viewing, but you can do this on the table or on your lap or whatever you prefer. Okay, so we have our five foot string. We have it folded in half. And we're gonna do what's called a lark's head knot. So this is how you attach most, most of the time this is how you will attach cords to a dowel. Um, so what you do is you put it on top of the dowel and you pull it behind the dowel like so. And then you're gonna pull the two ends of the string through the loop, like this. Can everybody see that? Let me know if you can't see very well. So we're gonna attach all 16 of the five foot strings just like that. And I like to start in the middle and work my way out through the sides just so you get it even. There we go, first one down. You guys just learned your first macrame knot. <laughs> and you're gonna repeat that. So just make sure that the bottom, the ends are even. And your loop goes over top. Pull it around back. And then the two ends can be pulled through the loop. And then you're gonna wanna snug it up to the one beside it and tighten a bit. So it should look like that. I'm sorry, my computer is kind of, you know, it doesn't have the greatest camera, but I hope you guys can see that. Let me know if I should um, try and Pull it in a little bit closer, okay? <clears throat> I think that's all right though. Okay, la di da, number three. So yeah, I'm just gonna do it out over on the other side. Did everybody um, do their first lark's head? You got it down pat? Let me know if you want me to slow down and do it again, slow-mo. So this macrame knot, the lark's head knot, is um, probably one of the most popular knots that you'll see in any tutorials or in any patterns. Um, most of the time people use this knot to attach cords to dowels, but there's also a little trick where you can add string into a wall hanging or what, um, what have you by using a lark's head knot and it, uh, it's a pretty cool trick. We might have to do it later just to show you. But yeah, we're learning some of the basic knots today, the lark's head. We're gonna be doing the square knot, which is basic macrame 101 as well. And we're going to be also learning how to do a clove hitch knot, which is also called a double half hitch knot 
or a vertical hitch knot. There's a bunch of different names for it, but that one's super common too. Um, and the last knot we'll be doing in the very end is going to be a barrel knot or a gathering knot. All right. Everybody doing okay with their lark's head knots? Well, I'm so happy to see that um, everyone could make it tonight. That's good. Okay, so this color isn't my fave. It's not as good as the rest, but we'll deal with it. <laughs> okay. So one thing about macrame is that once you learn how to do the knots, most of it is just rep repetition. So once you learn how to do it, you just do it over and over and over again, and eventually it looks like something, whatever you're making. <laughs> um, you're going to feel that way, especially when we're doing our square knots, because we have to make a lot of square knots. Um, but yeah, so for now, we'll deal with doing 16 of these. How's everybody doing? I feel like nobody said hello on the chat. You guys, <laughs> come on, don't make me talk to myself. <laughs> so Rachel, I'm so happy that you got your kid in time because I was a little bit worried. Just a little bit. Uh oh, okay, so my knot's coming undone here. Might have to tie this a little tighter. So how about to get people talking? Oh, awesome, I'm glad to hear that, Pam, yay. Um, to get you guys talking, how about we'll ask where everyone is from? And you know what, you know what I realized? If you don't have a Google account, I'm not sure if you can actually chat or a, a YouTube account, I mean. Oh dear, anyways, hope you guys can all ask me questions and stuff if you need to. And you know what, if you can't ask on here, just shoot me an email or um, an Instagram message afterwards and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. So I expect this should take us about two hours. I'm thinking halfway through we'll do a five minute break so you can, you know, go and get a drink of water, go use the washroom, whatever you need to do. And uh, then we'll resume. Awesome. A lot of Ottawa people, which makes sense, you know, because I was living in Ottawa too, so. I feel like most of my customer base is in Ottawa, although I do have, I get some random orders sometimes, which is funny. I think it's just, you know, people coming from Google or whatever, but I sent a package to Ireland not too long ago, which was very new for me. I had never sent overseas, so that was pretty cool. Not sure if you guys can hear the construction that's going on next door, but I hope it's not too distracting. I was kind of thinking of getting some music going, but that might be distracting. What do you guys think? Should we jam? <laughs> okay, we're almost done with our Lark's Head knots. I 
And you want them to kind of be pretty evenly spaced, but they will um, adjust a bit once you start doing the square knots that we'll be doing next. Okay, push this one over. Mm -hmm. And last one. So if you're finished doing your, when you finish doing your lark's head knots, please comment done and I'll start doing the square knots too. Just wanna make sure we're all on the right track and on the same page. All right, there we go. And that's what it should look like once they're all on there. You know, make them, uh, make them look pretty, make them straight and yada yada, you know. Yay. So it's funny because every time I do a video or a class or something like that, and I look at my hands and I'm like, oh my gosh, I should have got a manicure or something before I started doing this. But no, not me. I um, repotted all my plants yesterday, so it might be some, like dirt. Anyways, the things you think about afterwards, right? Okay, I'm gonna wait till at least one of you says done. Yay, Rachel, my, my prized student. <laughs> okay, I'll have a little sip of water and, oh, and we'll get going on the square knots. So for those of you that did our last class, the square knot is very similar to the spiral knot that we did. Um, the spiral knot, we, we stayed on the same side and you'll see it's a little bit different with the square knot, you alternate sides, if that makes any sense to you. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. <laughs> oh my goodness, I forgot about, uh, about your dog, that's so funny. So Rachel has the cutest puppies and she did our last class where we made a wall hanging and um, she sent me a video a couple days later of her dog attacking the wall hanging that she made. And I think it might, it must have been the dowel that the puppy wanted to get at. I forget your dog's name, but um, it must have been the dowel or something that she was looking to eat. But anyways, what an enjoyable video. I love that you have doggy um, doggy cams in the house because that just made it so interesting. You know, at least you can watch it in action and not be like, oh my gosh, I wonder what happened to this thing. Okay, so let's start with the square knots. Um, I'm going to start from over here, usually I would start from here, but it doesn't really matter. Um, actually, change my mind. So we're gonna start with the first four chords on the left. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fourth chord here, you see? And you're going to fold it under to make kind of a figure four. And it's gonna go under the two middle ones, but it's going to go over the one on your left. See there? And now to finish the knot, you take this string and you put it over the two middle strings and through the loop on the right. So here I'll show you how that should look. Okay. Now you tighten it. Is 
and there we go, that's what it should look like. And now, so that's called a half square knot. And to do the full square knot, we're gonna alternate, we're gonna do the same thing, but in reverse. So we're gonna use the left side to make the figure four. We're gonna go under the two middle strings, over the right string. And then the right string is gonna come up and over the two middle strings and through the loop. So it should look like that. And then you tighten it. And there you have it, a square knot. Everybody see that okay? I'm gonna do it again. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a whole row of square knots all across the top here. So you can take the next four strings and take the one furthest to the right, make a figure four, under the two middle, over the left, and then the left goes over the two middle, through the loop, like that. Whoops, sorry guys. Tighten, and now the opposite. Under the two middle, over the right. The right goes over the two middle, and through the loop. And then you tighten. And then we do that about, <laughs> I don't even know how many more times, but anyways, we're gonna have eight square knots across the top. So number three, here we go. Right, goes under the two middle, over the left. Okay, I'll, I'll go so. So the right one of the four goes under the two middle, over the left. So you have a figure, weird figure four like this. I guess it kind of looks like a backwards four in the camera, I'm not sure. Um, okay, and then your string on the left goes over the two middle and you pull it through the loop. And it should look like that. Where you have the string hanging out the front on the left side and the string hanging out the back on the right side. And then you tighten that And do the opposite. Left, under the two middle, over the right. The right, over the two middle, and through the loop. Now this part, you should be having your string on the right side come out the front, and then the string on the left side go through the back. I might pull you in just a tiny bit closer. I wish there was like a zoom on webcam, but there's not. Okay, can everybody see that? Now you tighten it. Did you get it, Yanyi? I hope so. Okay, I'm gonna do it another time for those of you that want me to.
There we go. And left goes under, over, right goes over and through. So I just noticed we had one more person join us. I hope that you got to see us do the lark's head. If not, just uh, comment or, I don't know, send me an email or something. I have my phone right beside me, so if you do send me an email, I'll uh, hopefully get it. Um, but yes, just know that you can always, after we're finished, this will be able, um, it will be available for you to watch again. So you can go back and get everything set up. But um, anyways, I hope we can follow along together. All right. So we have four, and we're going to do four more square knots. So right goes under the two middle, over the left. And then the left goes over the two middle and through the loop. All right, and then left under the two middle, over the right, right over the middle, and through the loop. You want them all to kind of be the same height along the top. I think they're looking good so far. Okay, so I hope you guys are getting the hang of the square knot now. Hopefully. Um, there we go. Just let me know if you want me to slow down. And let me know when you're finished your square knots across the top. It's looking good. So I love the idea of these wall hanging planters because A, it holds plants, which is amazing. And B, they're super cute. They're a little bit more intricate than your traditional plant hanger, which is pretty neat. I'm not sure if you guys saw that video, but that's pretty neat. Okie dokie. First row done, just like that. Now you're a macrame pro. So I know I've been uh, doing this for a long time, so I go pretty fast. You guys are mostly beginners, so I want to Stay at a pace that you can follow along to. So let me know when you're finished this top row and we'll get started on the next row. So exciting. Oh, Danielle, I just noticed that you voted that I should do the rose color just like you. Little late. <laughs> Although I did think about doing the rose color, but um, I'm almost out of that color. 
So I figured I may save it. So if anyone wants to make one themselves in that color, they can. Also, I uh, just finished the design for our next class, which is going to be, we're making a macrame wall hang in our class in March. And I just finished it, and that one is pink. Like, you know, the one that I made is pink. The one that we make in class doesn't necessarily have to be pink. But I was thinking maybe if I did the rose, and that would be too much pink going on in the house. All right. I'm going to get started on the next row. And... It will give you, I'll do it slowly as another opportunity so that you can uh, see the knot again. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to take these two strings on the very left side and I'm going to put them off to the side. AKA hang them off this little nail here. <laughs> okay, so those, those two are not going to be involved in the knots. And then I'm going to take the four strings next to it. And I'm going to continue to do more square knots. So left, sorry, right under the two middle and over the left. And the left over the two middle and through the loop on the right. And then you're going to tighten it. And now you don't want to tighten it too, too much. See, you want to just leave like barely enough space for your pinky finger to go through that little hole between the, the knots there. And then your left under the two middle, over the right, and right through the loop on the left. See that? So we're going to keep doing more square knots and um, keep taking string off to the side every row that we do so that we get a triangle pattern. And um, this is the tedious part because you're pretty much just repeating knot after knot after knot. So I hope that you guys um, are figuring out how to do the square knot pretty good. Take the next four strings here and do it again. Right goes under the two middle, over the left. Left goes over the two middle, through the loop on the right. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to finish this one up quickly and then I'm going to do another slow one. I just got your email, Bronwyn. We're going to do it again. Okay. So your four strings, you've got your four strings. You're going to take the one furthest to the right and you're gonna make a figure four with it. So you want your string to be bent like that, but it's gonna go under the other strings. And now you're gonna want it to be under the two middle strings, but over the left string. You see? So I'll let you guys all get to that formation there. I'm gonna wait 30 seconds. So it looks really strange, but you have your right string in a figure four shape 
and it goes under the two middle strings and over the string on the left. All right, everybody there? Okay, so now you take this string, the one on the left, not the one that you just made the figure four with, but this string. And you're gonna pull it up and you want it to go over the two middle strings like this. But now you're gonna tuck it through that loop here and you're gonna pull it through so that the string is actually coming out in the back of the knot. And that way it goes over the two middle strings and behind the string on the right. Okay, so I'm gonna tighten that up. And now we do the same thing in reverse. So we're gonna do the left under the two middle, figure four under the two middle over the right. And the right is gonna go over the two middle and through the loop on the left. So it goes over the two middle ones and then it comes out the back on the left. And then you tighten it. We'll do it again. Hopefully that was good. And you know, So right under, under to middle, over the left. And the left string goes over the two middle and through the right. And then you switch. So the left string, figure four, under the two middle, over the right. Right string goes over the two middle and through the loop on the back. So it's like that. And tighten. And next one. Right string under to middle, over the left. And the left string over the to middle, and through the loop. Left string under the two middle, over the right. And then the right string goes over the two middle and through the loop. And now remember this string should be hanging in the back so that it looks like this. When you tighten it, it should be going towards the back. And this one should be out in the front. Now, I believe this is called a left hand square knot. There's also the right hand square knot, which, you know, obviously is the opposite of what we're doing. So that this little part here is on the other side. 
it a little blurry or it's not just me. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Stay still, guys. Okay. So now next one. I'll uh, give you guys a second so you can get get to where I am. I'm going to start a new square knot. Okay, so the right string is under the two middle, over the left. Left goes over the two middle, and through the loop on the right. And we tighten. Now left string goes under the two middle, over the right. Right goes over the two middle, and through the loop. So now it's a lot easier if you stay close to the top when you're doing your knots. Um, if you're doing your knots down here, you know, it's going to be hard to slide it up and tighten. Um, it's going to get all jumbled. So you want to keep it close to the top. Right under the two middle, over the left, left over the two middle, and through the loop. Left under the two middle, over the right, right over the two middle, and through the loop, and tighten. And now see how there's two extra strings on the side? We're not going to do anything with those. Okay, guys, I hope we're doing okay here. Okay, and now we're going to do it same thing as we did before. We're going to take out two strings and we're going to put them off to the side. Well, I'm quickly learning. I'm not going to be able to do that for very long. It's going to topple over, but anyways. Now you take your four strings and you do more square knots. So this row has eight, this row has seven, and this row is going to have six. So right under the two middle, over the left, left over the two middle, and through the loop on the right. I feel like I may have just done that backwards. Okay, no I didn't. Left under the two middle, over the right, right, over the two middle, and through the loop. So all your knots should be looking the same with, um, you know, your little piece of string here on the left side. If you're um, not alternating sides, then it's gonna look spirally and it's gonna start twisting. So um, just be aware of that. Make sure to start with the right side under and over, and then the left side over and under. Oh, I just realized the construction stopped. Awesome. Okay, and then the left under and over and over and through.
right, under, over, left, over, through. Then the left, under the two middle, over the right, on the right, over the two middle, and through the loop. Now, it's about right now that your arms start to get a little sore if you're doing it up on the wall. <laughs> it's like quite the workout to keep my, it's like all in the traps. Anyways, arm day today. Okay, right under the two middle, over the left, left over the two middle, through the loop. I hope it's helping that I'm um, being repetitive, because if not, it's, <laughs> it might be annoying. <laughs> okay, the right side under the two middle, over the left, the left over the two middle, and through the loop. Oh, okay. See, this is what I mean when I say it's gonna start twisting. Bring in closer. I just did that backwards. So now this piece of string is coming out the front and this one is going in the back because I forgot to alternate. So it looks weird. It doesn't look the same as the other knots. So I'm gonna take that out. Just this part because I forgot to alternate. So that's because I started with the right string for both times. I didn't alternate to the left. So now I have to do the left. Left under the two middle, over the right, over the two middle, and through the loop. There we go, it looks much better. And we continue. Right under to middle, over the left, left over the two middle and through the loop. And alternate left under the two middle, over the right, and right over the two middle and through the loop. There we go. And sometimes that happens. You just forget which side you started on. Keep an eye out, make sure you don't uh, make a mistake and then miss it and find it halfway through and have to, you know, take out all your knots and go back or just leave it. You know, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I go back and fix everything, but you know, most people wouldn't notice if you did one knot the other way, I'm sure. Okay, so there, I'm done my line of six. How's everybody doing? Comment how many square knots you've made so far. If you can count them, I guess there's eight at the top. Or maybe comment which row you're on. There we go. One, two, three. I'm about to start my fourth row. It's pretty easy peasy once you get the hang of it, but it's just getting the hang of it that's kind of tough. But once you get it, you get it. Is anybody on their second row? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play a little background music if it assaults your ears. Please let me know. 
I just don't want to listen to my heaters in the background. <laughs> and the sound of my own voice. So great. All right, so I'm gonna take these two off to the side. Nobody told me what row they're on, so I'm just gonna keep going. I hope everything's okay over there. I think next time we might do this in Zoom instead of on YouTube Live. I'm new to this too, so. You know, in-person classes are definitely way better in my opinion, but online class is okay. I guess we have to deal with it, right? All right. So, square knots. Yay or nay? <laughs> so we're taking the four strings. Going under the two middle, over the left. Left goes over the two middle, through the right. Tighten. And then the left, under the two middle, over the right. Right, over the two middle, and through the loop. There you go. You guys, let me know if the music is loud or I don't know what it sounds like. I didn't test the sound with music, so let me know. Okay, next square knot. Four strings, right, under the two middle, over the left, left, over the two middle, through the loop. Tighten. And then left under the two middle, over the right. Right over the two middle. And through the loop. And tighten. I'm hoping that you're starting to get the hang of it by now. We all learn at different paces though, so don't beat yourself up if you're not getting it. Just remember that uh, you can keep trying and eventually you're gonna get it. And you can always watch this over again. And uh, yeah. Over, the, under the two middle, over the left, left over the two middle, and through the loop. Tighten it up. Left under the two middle, over the right, right over the two middle, and through the loop. So remember when you start a new row that you have to take two from the side, hang them up from behind or whatever you have to do. I'm going to adjust this for a second because mine's going crazy here. Okay, so these are going in the back. Pretty much you're taking 
two strings from each square knot on the edge and putting it aside. Here we go. Okay, so I'm starting another row. So I didn't, I think we do eight rows all together. And the last row is only gonna have one square knot. If anybody has a song request, let me know. DJ Kate. <laughs> We've been really liking uh, listening to some, I guess they call it lo fi, lo fi. They do some chill music that's kind of, you know, you don't really have to listen hard. It's just like background noise, pretty much. It's nice for when you're trying to concentrate on something. So someday, if I ever hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube, then I can use my phone to do this, which means I will have much better video quality because I believe this laptop is from like 10 years ago. I don't even know what year it was, 2012, maybe. Still going though. So it goes a lot faster once you're uh, once you got your groove and um, like the more rows you do, the less knots you have to do. So this was row one, two, three, four, five, and I only had to do four knots. So once you get to like the last few rows, it's pretty quick. Okay, and now I'm on row one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm only gonna be making three knots. This is a pretty good Friday night activity, hey? Beats uh, sitting around at home doing nothing really. I've uh, I started doing macrame while I'm watching TV because you know once you get the hang of it and you know what you're doing, you can kind of mindlessly repeat. It's like knitting or whatever your choice hobby is. Once you know how to do it and it comes easily to you, then you can kind of do it mindlessly and watch a show or do whatever. Just finished watching um, Red Oaks on Amazon Prime. It's pretty funny. The, the actor on it really gives me, um, he really reminds me of like Jonah Hill. He's kind of one of those geeky, dorky looking guys, but he's really funny. Lots of marijuana smoking going on in the show too. It's a pretty good mindless show to watch and do macrame and whatever. It's based in the 80s too, which was kind of cool. Got to hear some 
old 80s music. All right, how are we doing guys? I think I'm gonna finish off the triangle here and then I'm gonna take a break and I'll wait for you guys to catch up to me and then we'll start the next section. Okay, last knot. Here we go. Okay, so I've finished my triangle. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows of knots. It's looking pretty good. How's everybody else doing? Hopefully you're doing okay. I want to wait a few minutes until I start doing um, the detailing on the side here. We're gonna be doing it's called the um, double half hitch or the clove hitch knot. Um, but I'm gonna, let's take five. You guys can, uh, you know, go do what you have to do or you can finish up your triangle and I'll be right back. Okay, Rachel, you're doing good, awesome. Actually, I'm not going anywhere. I don't know why I said I'll be right back. I'm just gonna stop nodding for a minute and uh, sit down. Ooh. So I'm not sure why, but for some reason I was just on my tiptoes for the past like hour. <laughs> my calves are gonna be sore tomorrow. So I'm super excited, you guys. Um, as some of you may know, I've been living in an RV, but we just got an apartment and moved in February 1st. And the best thing about living in an apartment now is that I can rekindle my plant lady, um, my love for plants. When I was in the RV, I had five plants, two of which were pretty much dead. Like one of them had a massive die off. It was beautiful in the summer and luscious and then all the leaves just fell off. And I thought maybe it had fungus gnats or something, but, um, yeah, I don't think it was fungus gnats because all the leaves fell off and then it was just dead. So I cut it down and I'm hoping that it grows back. But anyways, moral of the story is now I have more space. So I bought a couple plants the other day and I'm super excited. I got myself a Monstera plant, which great news. It was technically two plants and I separated them. So now I have two Monstera plants. And I got a little succulent, which is super cute. Um, I actually have them right here. I'll show you. Ta-da! Isn't he adorable? So when I first started my journey into plant ownership, I had a few succulents, and I killed them all because I overwatered them, obviously, like hovering over the plants wondering when they needed water but 
I think now I've gotten a little bit better. And um, one thing that I started doing with my succulents is I bottom water them now. So I put them on a tray, like on a little saucer, and I pour water in and I let it soak up as much water as it wants for like half an hour. And then I, I feel like that's helping and it takes up as much water as it needs. And I can't overwater it that way, right? Really grateful for the recorded option as a newbie. Okay, awesome. Pamela, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. I really enjoy this too because it kind of is social, like a little bit, you know, more so than anything else that I've been doing in the past six months <laughs> or however long. I feel like the last time we actually were social with people in the flesh was in the summertime, which uh, was a long time ago. It's kind of, it's kind of like a, it's a nice oasis to be able to do something, get your mind off everything that's going on in the world and learn to macrame. So, um, I have all of your emails, I think, from the orders that you made to buy the supplies. I'll send out an email after the class with, um, the pattern so it will be written instructions and I also have a knot guide so it has step-by-step -step instructions on how to do every individual knot so that way you can go back and reference it if you ever want to make something else or if you're just trying to finish up this one you can like go slowly at your own pace all that good stuff um, and I do like I said before I um, I videotaped myself doing it before so I'll post that video afterwards so you can watch a more condensed version or you can rewatch this class, but it's going to be like two hours long. So I'm not sure if you'll want to do that. Um, the video that I made, I think is eight or nine minutes. Either way, you'll be able to rewatch and you'll be able to go through the knot guide, all that good stuff. So yay. Okay, I'm gonna get started on the next knot. Has uh, anyone finished their row of triangles yet? Please say yes, please say yes. Okay, I'm gonna refill my water first, one sec. Okay, are we ready to rumble? Ooh, okay, Danielle, I just got your message. Okay, awesome, someone is done. Sweet, okay, so we're gonna start on the next section now. So now what you're gonna wanna do is take the cord furthest to the left. Well, I got two here, but you're gonna take this cord furthest to the left. And this is gonna be called your leading cord. Um, not sure what the other cord is called. I'm gonna call it, a, <laughs> I don't know, lagging cord, leading and lagging cord. But anyways, um, so this is your leading cord on the very left. You're gonna take the cord next to it and you're gonna want it to be situated under your leading cord. So here, I'll show you. So leading cord goes over your lagging cord. Not a technical term. All right, so the lagging cord is gonna come up over the leading cord 
and under. This is kind of hard to show. So it should look like this. And it's going to come under, and you're going to want to tuck it through the loop. So see that? And pull it over through the loop. So that your string should make some a little, um, it's hard to tell with this color, but this one is coming out of the front. And then you're going to tighten it. Don't worry, I'm going to repeat that. But first you have to finish the knot. So that's the first half of the knot. And the second half, you go over, under, and through. Actually, it's exactly the same thing. You just repeat it twice for one knot. And then you tighten it and it should look just like that. Two little things. Okay, and then you take your next lagging strand. Not the one that came out of the knot, but the one next to it. You go over the leading strand, under the leading strand, and it goes over itself. So it makes kind of a, a loop. And then you tighten it. And so you do two of these with each string. So do it again, over the leading strand and under the leading strand and you pull it through. Okay, you see? So now we have two strings that we already used. And this is called your double half hitch. Um, also called a clove hitch by some people. So now I'm taking my third string. I'm bringing it over my leading strand. And you always, you always wanna have your leading strand in the direction of where your knots are gonna go. So we're making our knots along the edge of this triangle, so I'm holding my leading strand in that direction. We're gonna do the opposite direction on the opposite side afterwards. But anyways, okay, so third one. Go over, under, through, and you make your little loop there and then you pull it tight. Over, under, and through. And now be aware that you can manipulate the knot to sit where you want it. So we want it to be like pretty close to those square knots and we want them all to be very straight. So tighten it or loosen it or manipulate it in the way that you want so that it looks nice. And now I'm starting with my fourth one. Over the leading cord, under the leading cord and through the loop. Over, under, through. And so your string should be hanging out the front, but when you tighten it, it should look like it's in the back. And you see how they get like nicely spaced out like that once you do the double half hitch. All right, we're gonna keep going with the next one. Over, under, through, and pull tight. 
over, under, and over, or through the loop I meant. Anybody's having trouble, let me know. I'll slow down a bit. We're going over, and then you pull it under and through the loop. Now, you know what? When I first started, I thought that this knot was the most difficult one. But now that I'm doing it again, I think the square knot is harder than this one. This one, it's difficult to get it to line up straight and that kind of thing. But over and pull it through. Okay. Everybody getting the hang of this one? Is the leading strand the same each time? Yes, it is. So you're keeping this one that I have in my hand, you're keeping it straight across. Well, you know, you want it to go along the line and that's gonna be your leading cord for the entire thing. So. This is your leading cord, and you're changing the other cord that you make the knot with. And the, the cord that you're making the knot with is the one that does all the work. So it goes over, under, and through, and then you tighten it, and you can literally just keep your leading cord where it is. Some people, like, I've seen other macrame artists pin their leading cord so that they don't get it lost. Um, with just a piece of tape or whatever they like to use. Um, I don't like to do that. I just like having my hands on, you know. Um, but yeah, so it's the same leading cord each time. And we're working our way down using the next string on the line from the square knots. So I've already done quite a few over here with those. And now I'm gonna start here with the one that I haven't made a knot with yet. And you're gonna make two knots with the one cord. That's why it's called a double half hitch. And after you're done two, you move on to the next string. So you go over, and then you pull it through. And you do that once, and then you repeat it with the same string twice. So one, two, and then on to the next string.
And you'll be able to notice if you forget to do two knots because the strings will be really close together. If you do it the right way, they should be all um, similar separation up at the top here. Okay. Pardon me, my arm's getting a little tired. Okay. Over, through, tighten. And see how I tighten? I used both hands and I pull this to the left and I keep this straight so that they don't get jumbled. And then I like to just scooch it up a little bit with my fingers like that. Okay, now, when you have your line, this bottom square knot, you wanna make sure you use one of the strings coming out of it, the one on the left. The other one, the one on the right that's coming out of the square knot, you leave that for the line we're gonna do on the other side. So I wish I could do a super zoom on that, but I'm sure you'll get it. So these are the two that are coming from the square knot on the bottom here. I'm gonna use this one in my line for this side. And then this one is gonna go on my line for the other side, just to keep everything even. Okay, so I did all the left side. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the right side. Um, the knot is the same, but it feels different when you're doing it with your leading cord on the right. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys are doing good with this one. I've had no complaints yet, so that's good. <laughs> Let me know if you need me to go over that, um, but I'm gonna get started on this one. So I'll show you guys how it looks a little bit different. So we're gonna use our string on the right as our leading cord. So we're gonna have it like this. And then these ones are gonna be the ones that we do the knots with, like these strings. So the cord on the right is the leading, this string, and so it's, exactly the same, but it just feels different because you're using different hand, right? So you go over and then under and through. And you tighten that. And then over, under, through and tighten, exactly the same. I think it's just weird because I'm holding it with my left hand and it feels strange, but anyways. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hang my leading cord just like that. And I'm still gonna use both hands, but it just makes it easier for me. So I'm gonna go over the, leading cord, under, and then I'm gonna, yeah, I get why, oh, I did that with the wrong string. Okay, so I already did a knot with this one. Already did a knot, don't need that one. Starting with the second one now. Over the leading cord, under, 
and tighten. Hmm. I'm wondering if this will be more comfortable if I go on the other side. So I'm gonna move, pardon me for a second. No, no. <laughs> no, I can already tell that it's not gonna be good. Okay, let's just continue. So when I first started, this one was really tricky for me because I kept doing weird things and like the string wouldn't come out the bottom, it would come out the side and yada yada. So it takes a little while to get, well, it took me a little while to get really good at it. And also it's the way that you tighten it really makes a big difference because it makes sure that your line is straight and not wonky. It's easier when you have these square knots to just tighten it up to. But if you're trying to do it like, you know, in the middle of the hanging to keep the line straight is kind of difficult. All takes practice. Okay, this got a little weird there. There we go. How's it looking so far? And Danielle, I love that you shared that picture because I love seeing how everybody's doing. Um, if you guys want to take a photo and tag me on Instagram, love that. You know, in person, usually you, uh, I would be bopping around and going from person to person and trying to help where I need to, but I can't do that here. So it's nice to see a picture. So if you ever lose your leading cord and you don't know which one it is, it's going to be the one that's coming out of the last knot. Like it's going to be coming straight to your left on this side and straight into the right on this side. You can see it's kind of coming out of the knot here. And trust me, that does happen. You lose the leading cord, especially when you're doing a big piece and you want to take a break. And oh, some people like to mark it with like a piece of tape on the end. But I found if you use that little trick, then you should be fine. So is everybody liking macrame so far? I hope you're all enjoying yourselves. I hope it's a little bit relaxing and not so stressful now that you kind of got the hang of it.
I really like this color. It's like a nude beigey color. This is our cappuccino color for those of you that are wondering, but um, I really like it because it's, you know, not your traditional white, but it's still very neutral. And I feel like it would look good with whatever pot you put in it. Okay, so now I'm at the, at the junction. I'm gonna use this last cord from the square knot. And I'm gonna make a knot with it on my leading cord. And you're gonna tighten it. Okay. So now I've done both rows and this part is very important. So I want everybody to pay attention. Um, even if you're not at the same point as me, I want you to check this out. So now we have a gap in our triangle and we're left with our two leading cords. So now um, I am going to use the, the leading cord from the left as my leading cord. And then I'm gonna make the knot with the leading cord that came from the right. So I do the same knot over and through and over and through. Now, remember that because we did that, our line is going to continue this way and we're going to use this leading cord from the right side to extend our line out this way. So these are still gonna be our leading cords. So I'm gonna hang those up for now. I want you guys to get to this point and let me know where you are. This is where we're gonna start doing our diamond pattern, which should be easy if you guys are getting, getting the hang of this. So this half hitch is an awesome knot because it really makes you, it allows you to do whatever kind of line you want in your macrame. Um, you might see, like you can go and look at other macrame pieces and you'll be able to tell which knot made the line now, which is, it was like a pretty big aha moment for me when I started doing macrame. I was like, oh, that's how they do it, okay. So you can make it straight, you can make it wavy. Um, some people like to do a whole row under their lark's head just to make it look, I don't know, it looks pretty cool like that. I never do that, but it looks cool. Well, maybe I should start. How are we doing? Mm -hmm. It's starting to get dark here now. So you guys are mostly in Ottawa, so I know it's at 8.30 there, it's, uh, oh, excuse me, it's 5.30 here. It's just starting to get dark. I'm so excited. These are getting a little bit longer. You have one leading side done. Okay, that's fine. It's totally fine. Start with your other one now. And now that you have the hang of it, 
it shouldn't take you that long anyways. Um, but you have to have both done in order to start the next part. So I'm going to keep, I'm going to wait a little bit. Not in any hurry. Oh, but anyways, back to my plants. <laughs> I scored this awesome wicker basket to put one of my plants in and it was get this at the dollar store so i'm pretty pumped up about it i'll show you guys and it's the perfect size for a six inch pot or eight inch pot i don't know but anyways check this out oh that's funny you're way too close Check it out. Isn't that the cutest thing? And I put my little baby monster in it. I'm so excited. I feel like you go to, you know, a different store like HomeSense or anywhere and everything that's wicker now is so expensive. They charge like $40 for a freaking wicker basket. So I'm pretty excited to have found that one for $4 at the Dollarama. Score. Um, okay. Anyone else getting close to the the next part yet? There we go. Zoom in again. <laughs> you guys would laugh, but when I'm zooming in, I actually have the computer set up on two boxes on a chair. So it's high enough because I'm standing doing this. So I have it lifted on two boxes and a chair. And when I'm zooming out, I'm just moving the chair. And then when I zoom in, moving the chair. <laughs> Very high tech scenario. Everything here at Minimalist Macrame is super high tech. But really, I'm just just a girl in her house teaching macrame. It'd be cool someday to uh, be able to hire a partner to teach classes with. I'm sure once once you know things go back to normal, I can get a friend to come teach classes with me and help out you know my younger sister she's uh she just turned 20 I think she just turned 20 um in at the beginning of February but she learned how to macrame in the summer I did a little class with her and she's so good she's a natural I think it's in our blood or something <laughs> So I told her that if I ever need to hire someone for minimalist macrame, she's the girl that I'm going to go to. So look out for her in the in-person classes. Or if I ever, you know, move to Costa Rica or something, I might get her to do the Canadian chapter. <laughs> a girl can dream. Well, I'm definitely gonna be very hydrated after this. I've just been drinking water in the background while I wait, so. Yay, hydrating. So Bronwyn, how are you and your friends doing? Is everybody getting along good? I loved um, Bronwyn, who's joining us tonight. She is having a little macrame party. So her and her friends are FaceTiming and watching this event and doing it all at the same time, which is pretty cool. I thought that was a great idea. I had um, someone else around Christmas time had ordered a few DIY kits for our 
boho hanger, like another plant hanger. And uh, they said they were having a family Christmas macrame class, which was pretty cool. So I don't know if they actually got together at Christmas and did it or if they did it online, but I thought that was pretty neat. A little macrame party. I was kind of jealous that I didn't get to join in. I didn't get an invite, so <laughs> I'm just kidding, but. That is literally my dream. Just have people that love to do macrame all around. I really should time myself sometimes. So I usually, you know, time myself when I make it at home, but it's always different when you're teaching a class because everyone learns at a different pace, right? So I estimated that it would take us about two hours to do this, but I think it might be more two and a half now. But honestly, at this point, we don't have all that much to do. You've already learned all of the knots that we're gonna do besides the gathering knot at the end. Um, so it's, in theory, it shouldn't be too tough from here on out. You've learned the majority of the hard stuff in the beginning. Is that good to hear that you're over the hardest part? <laughs> okay. Are we ready for the next part yet? What do we think? Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the leading strand that comes from the left side and that's gonna be our leading strand here. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use these three strings that are hanging down and make some more knots just like you were doing. So the double half hitch knot. And you want to continue keeping your line straight. It's a little bit different now because you don't have those square knots to push up against. But if you keep your leading strand straight, then it should be okay. Or, sorry. We're going to do, I keep saying straight, but it's really on a diagonal. So we're going to go this way. Remember that at the end, we want it to be diamond shaped. So we're going to do that. See how I'm holding the string tight to guide where I want the knot to stop. Because if you don't do that, then it will just go all the way up to the top. Like you have to keep it, you want your tension to be tight enough so that these strings aren't too loose too. All right, so I did three double half hitches. So I have three strings hanging from here. See? Yeah, so when the lines meet and you have that little gap in the middle of your triangle, you're going to use the leading cord that comes from the left as your leading cord and then the leading cord that comes from the right, you're going to use to make your knot. So you'll see because the knots will all look the same when you keep going. Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. So yeah, just continue your line from the left and keep going and use the next Use the one leading cord from the right and then use the next three after that to get to where we are. And then after that, you're going to use this, this is why I hung up this side is because the leading cord from the right is gonna be used to extend the line this way. So 
I'm using. I'm going to extend the line this way. I'm going to make another double half hitch. And remember, you're only going to use three of the strings that hang down for this one because we don't want our diamond to be too big. Okay, so when you're done there, it should look like this, where you have, for some reason it looks a bit uneven, but you have six strings hanging down here from the middle. And then you have your leading cord still coming through the knots. And you're not gonna touch those leading cords for now. So we're just gonna use the six middle strings And we're going to make one big square knot in the middle. So for this square knot, instead of using four strings, we're using six. So where we usually used one string to make the figure four, we're going to use two. So I'll show you what I mean. So we're still keeping two in the middle, like we did before, but we're going to do two under the middle one and over the left two, and then the left two are gonna go over the middle two and through the loop made by the ones on the right. So it's the same thing, but on a bigger scale. And then you tighten it and you make it look all pretty. So that's half of your square knot. And then these two on the left go under the two middle over the two on the right, and then the two on the right go over the two middle, and you bring them through the two on the left. See? It makes a nice little knot. I really like the look of the square knot with the uh, multiple strings. Okay, so I hope we're doing good here. Did everybody get the line, the lines extended? Okay, so now what we're gonna do, this is crazy you guys. We find our leading cord from here, so you can see how it's coming out, right? So we're actually going to take the leading cord and pull it in the direction we want it to go, which is to make that diamond shape. So we pull it this way, and we're going to make our, our knots with the strings that come out of the square knot. So you pull it to the right. Sorry, I'm using the left side uh, leading strand and I'm going to pull it to the right in the opposite direction of where it was going before. And I'm going to use the string closest to it to start my line of double half hitches. And now this part is pretty important to um, keep an eye on your tension because it's going to make the diamond shape so if it's too tight, it's going to be just um, 
it's going to get too close here. And if it's too loose, it's going to keep going that way. So just you got to find that Goldilocks zone because you want to have a little bend. So we keep going and we're gonna use four strings for the bottom left and then four strings for the bottom right. So four on this side, four on this side. And then we're gonna do the leading strands together like we did at the top of the triangle. So I did my four on that side. And now I'm gonna find my leading strand on this side on the right. So here it is coming out of the knots there. And I'm gonna pull it over to the left. And I'm gonna want it to make this shape here. So we use the string that's coming from the square knot to make our knot. You see how I'm pulling it in the direction that I want it? Wait a second. One, two, three. <laughs> oh, whoops. Okay, so we're actually supposed to have three coming out the side, not four. As you can see, I accidentally grabbed this fourth string from the side, and I'm going to have to take that out and redo it because it's not right. See, even I make mistakes. You're only supposed to have three strings coming from each side. So I'm going to change the song first and then I'm going to take them out. And now I'm very careful when I take out my double half hitches because you can really pull the string apart. It's not very like tightly wound, so I don't want to pull it apart. So I always just like use my nail to separate them like that. And then I pull it out slowly and make sure that the string is intact. Another way that's super easy is you find where you want your knot to come out, which for me is right here. And you just pull the leading strand completely out of the knots. Macrame hacks 101. Okay, so I accidentally used this string in my knots, which was wrong. I should only be using the three strings that come out on the left side of the square knot here. So I'll do that again. And now this design, I made a small little diamond, um, mainly because of length restrictions. So if I had longer string, if we did, you know, six foot string or seven foot string or even eight foot string instead of five foot string, then we could have made a bigger diamond but since these are going to be used when we make the front part, I didn't want to make the diamond too big, like too wide, I mean. 
these are some things that you learn as you're making designs. Sometimes you try to make something and, you know, guesstimating string is quite difficult for, for new, um, newbies, but, um, you learn as you go. And my general rule of thumb for guesstimating string length is keep in mind that if you do a lark's head, you're cutting your string in half essentially. So we had five foot string, but we have two and a half feet of working string. Like it's only two and a half feet long. Um, and my general rule of thumb is if you're going to be doing lots of square knots or you know you're going to be doing lots of knotting, then you go three to four times the length of your final product. And if you're, you know, leaving lots of space where you don't do knots at all, stick to three. If you're going to be doing lots of knots, do four. And if you're a beginner and you want to make sure, do five times the length of your final. Um, you're always going to have some sort of waste, but I try and minimize mine as much as possible. And now I have a few tricks on how I can add in string when I need to. So um, that makes it a bit easier if I do run out. Um, but when you're just starting out, more is better. And that way you won't have to scrap your piece or go back and undo a bunch of knots or whatever and in the end whatever you have as scraps you can use for another project you can make uh, macrame coasters or you can make a feather or you know something um, earrings or a keychain something that doesn't require a lot and you can just use like the cutoff ends on okay so we have this diamond pattern I'm at the point where I have the break like I did up at the top here. So this is gonna be exactly the same as what you did at the top of the triangle, where you keep your leading strand on the left as your leading strand, and then your leading your strand from the right is gonna do the knot. Now, honestly, it doesn't really matter if you use the right or the left leading strand to do the knot. But the reason why I keep it um, to the, the right, sorry, I keep the left leading strand going is because it makes this line on top. See how it continues there and then it continues there. When you make larger pieces or even say if we did like two or three um, diamond patterns, you do notice this line if it stops or if it continues. And it's, it's like pleasing to the eye to have it um, symmetrical, I guess. I don't know, that might just be me being <laughs> super over the top with my macrobay designs, but <laughs> anyways. So I like to keep the left leading cord as the leading cord and then do my knots with the right. And we're gonna do that again one more time before we're finished. Okay, so hopefully you're all doing good at this point. We have most of our hanger done. Now we're gonna start making the little area where the pot is gonna sit. So um, I'm gonna take a quick break, two minutes, I'll be right back. Let me know if you're close to here or if you're here or if you're not even close and you're, like, you're gonna have to rewatch. Doesn't really matter, but I'd like to have at least one or two people following along at the same pace, which would be nice. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take a quick two minute break. I'll be right back.
How are we doing over here? Okay, I'm gonna continue now and we're gonna make the, the place where the pot sits. So I'm gonna bring this down just a tiny bit so you can see. Now I'm gonna take the fours, sorry, the string on the left, sorry, the right, and the string on the left. And now just like you use the string on the left as your leading chord for this, we're gonna do the same thing. So string on the left is gonna be over top. String on the right is gonna be underneath. We're gonna do that half hitch. This one is a little different because, uh, mm, no it's not. Oh, yes, okay. So, since we don't have, I don't know, it's a little bit different than before. So we're gonna bring it over top and we don't have to bring it through. We just have to make sure that it goes over on one side like that. And then we bring it up and through like we were before. Now this knot, you want it to be centered under your um, diamond pattern and you're gonna tighten it so that it's centered. So I did a pretty good job of doing that on the first try actually, but last time it took me quite a few tries, so don't feel bad if you have to loosen it and redo it a couple times. Um, so yeah, we're gonna use this one as our leading chord and we're gonna continue on but instead of using strings around here, we're going to use strings from the side here. So they're gonna pull, we're gonna use four strings to pull up the front. And I'll show you the finished one just so you can get a good idea of what I'm talking about. Here's the finished one. And this is what we're making right now. So we're gonna take four strings from the left, four strings from the right to make a diamond pattern and that's gonna be the front part. Okay, makes sense? Now, I'm gonna start with the next chord on the right side, and I'm gonna make a double half hitch knot. And the next one. And remember to keep it um, same tightness, same uh, tension, so that we're gonna be making this pattern, but just down lower. Okay, and there's the first side, and now you're gonna use this one as your leading chord on the left side. So you're gonna take your leftmost chord here and make a knot. And now you want them to be, this is the tricky part, same tension for both sides, and it's got to be in the middle, so you don't want your pod hanging to one side. This is probably the most difficult part of the of the design, I'm sure. It's getting this to sit right. So now we're gonna use four chords from the right and the left to make this diamond. And you should have 
three chords from each side to make another square knot like you did up here. Okay, there we go. See, it's not that hard. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, oh no, we're okay. Okay, so now you take the six chords, leaving out the leading strands, and we're gonna make another big fat square knot like we did right here. So you take the two on the right, put it under the two in the middle, and over the two on the left, and then the two on the left, over the two in the middle, and through that loop, and they come out the back. And then you tighten it. I like to straighten everything, make sure it's not jumbled. And now I'm going to take my two strings on the left, go under the two middle, and over the two strings on the right. And then bring those two strings on the right over the two middle ones and through the loop on the left. There we go. Okay guys, we're getting close. So now you're going to continue your diamond shape like you did up here using your leading cords. So I'm using the leading cord on the left side. I'm gonna bring it back this way. And I'm not gonna take any of those strings on the back here. I'm gonna use only the strings from the square knot here. <laughs> Don't make the same mistakes that I do, kids. Okay, so there I have my three, and I'm gonna switch. And now it's the right leading chord. And I'm gonna make that go to the left. Now see how my chords are getting kind of short? That's okay because we're gonna be making a knot right about here. So don't worry too much about that. So now I'm just stretching it out a bit to make sure that it's sitting where I want it. Okay, and now you guys know what to do. The left side's gonna be our leading, the right side's gonna make our knot. Matchy, matchy. See, see how it ends like that? Honestly, maybe nobody else even notices, but I do. <laughs> 
So now we have our little front piece. Isn't it cute? Oh my gosh, I'm so excited for this. Okay, so now is when you're gonna want to try your pot and make sure that it sits right. So as you can see on this one, I did it for a specific pot, so it like looks a little wonky when it's hanging, but once the pot is in there, it looks straight. So what I'm gonna do is take my pot, preferably with no plant in it, and you're gonna tuck it in behind this um, diamond here. And what you're gonna wanna do is hold it in place, get all your strings together, and you're gonna, you know, I may have made that a little too high, but it's not bad. Anyways, you're gonna want to hold all of your strings where you want them. And this is where I like to use an elastic to um, mark where I want my knot to be. So you can also use, um, you know, another piece of string. You have those two three foot pieces. You could use one of them if you like. And just uh, mark your spot. So let's see here, what are we gonna do? And also make sure that these are all straight. Cause that's something that would drive me crazy after. I don't know about you guys. Okay, there we go. Should I do it a little higher? Hmm. Let's do, hmm. It really depends on the plant you're gonna have in here too, because if you have a certain plant's gonna cover this. I'm gonna put it right here. And there I have all my strings. And don't worry about them being a little bit loose because you can you can tighten that later. So I'm gonna use this elastic and just preferably take your pot out before you do this actually. <laughs> I'm getting a little crazy here. Okay, there we go. So it looks cute. Looks kind of weird when you're zoomed up like that. But you can see from here, it looks adorable. La vida. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pot out. And see how it has like that thing? It's because I positioned it where I want it to sit. So it looks weird when it's flat, but it looks better when the pot's in. So now we're gonna make what's called a barrel knot, also known as a gathering knot. I had someone told me, tell me once that it's not actually called a barrel knot, but I call it a barrel knot and I've seen other people call it a barrel knot. So that's what we're going with today. Um, so you're gonna take one of your three foot pieces of string. Um, if you tied one around here, you can just leave that for now. Um, use the other one. So we're gonna fold the three foot piece of string in, in uh, half, but we're gonna want one end to be quite a bit longer than the other. I'd say maybe this end double the length of the other side. So one third is on this side and two thirds is on the other side. It doesn't really matter what side is what. Um, so yeah, and now you make a little loop at the top. Everybody see that? So now what you're gonna wanna do is take your loop and have it up at the top where you marked where your knot is gonna be. So you see the loop there is at the top of my elastic. 
and now hold it against all your other strings and keep it tight and then use the longer side and you're going to start wrapping the longer side around your group of strings. So this is a little bit tricky, but you'll get the hang of it. You want to wrap it pretty tight. So, and then just keep going. I like to wrap it about five, six, maybe seven times. It all depends on how you want it to look. So there I got one, two, three, four, five. Maybe I'll do, I'll do it all the way up to the elastic here. Okay, so now when you're at the end, you put the end through the loop at the top. So you have that. And now, I always do this, I lose my end, I should, tell you all to uh, keep track of which one but anyways you can just gently tug on them and see you'll know which one you're supposed is the end of your loop when your loop starts to close a bit see so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this short piece that came through the loop up and oh I lost it again there we go and pull the other one tight. So pull both so that the loop goes in the knot. You want it to be like in the middle somewhere. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna scooch mine up a bit because I want it to be right where that elastic is. Okay, there we go. So. I'm going to take my elastic off. Okay, so I took my elastic off. I'm going to try my pot once more just to be sure. Let's see what it looks like. It's perfection. Amazing. Okay, so I take that out. And now what I'm gonna do is get my scissors, which this is pretty much the only part you need the scissors for. Um, and you're gonna cut that little hangy piece that's hanging out of the side. Cut it really close so that you don't see the edge sticking out. And once you cut that, you can pull on the loop a little bit more and it will hide it. Um, but yeah, that's the end. And now I'll zoom out. So you can see here, but it's pretty long at the end still. So I'm gonna give that a snip too. You can leave it the way it is if you like a longer fringe. I'm just going to go probably to here and I'm just gonna cut it straight across. Now you can do alternating lengths. You can, uh, you can brush this out with a comb or something to make it um, floofy, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, but yeah, there we go. And now the last piece of three foot string is to hang this. So um, I do have a tutorial on how to do this on Instagram on a reel if you want to go and look at it. Um, or you can just watch this, you know, well, I'm going to do it right now and you can watch it again if you need to. But essentially I'm going to fold this string in half and this 
part. I'm going to fold it again so that there's a little loop. And I'm going to make, first I'm going to take this part off. This is going to be a little bit difficult to show on doing this, I think. But I'm going to make a lark's head, but it's going to be upside down. So I'm just going to pull this down if I can. So this lark's head is going to be, the strings are going to be coming out the opposite side of the other lark's head this, that you did. So see that? And the strings are coming up. So there you go. You did your lark's head on that side. And now you're going to um, do a clove, double clove hitch just like you did down here and on the diamonds, you're gonna do a double clove hitch using the shorter string to make the knot and the longer string is gonna act as your leading cord. So I really can't do this. Um, actually, I'm gonna put you down on the keyboard and you can see, maybe, no. <laughs> so I really can't uh, do it on camera for you to see, but you've learned how to make the clove hitch and I'll show you what it looks like after. If you want to see more in depth then go back to my uh, my tutorial on Instagram or actually I'm gonna post on, uh, I'll post a little video on YouTube too. But, so it should look like that after. Sorry, that's, so you have like a knot on top and then this, you'll just pull it behind and then you have your string your long piece still here. And your long piece is gonna go off on this side and do another lark's head, but it's a little bit different because um, you have to fake the lark's head. You can't just make one. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your cord behind the dowel, sorry, in front of the dowel and then the cord goes behind, but you wanna bring it out on the left side here. Oh, left or right, it's right. You wanna bring it out to the right. And then you're gonna do it like this, so that there's a little loop here, see? And you bring it in front, and then you pull that string through the loop. Now don't tighten it too much yet because you want to make sure the string is long enough. I think that's good. I might just tighten it just a little tiny bit. There we go. And then I'm going to use this short piece. Here, I can show you now. I'm going to use the shorter piece to do a half hitch, double half hitch. There, now it's nice and tight. You won't have to worry about um, your plant falling as long as you have a good nail or hook or um, I just even use like a little picture hanging kit and I put it up here because I only have a four inch pot in there. It's not too heavy. Um, so I'm gonna trim these. And one thing that I like to do is I usually use a bobby pin to just stick these strings under, you know what? It's not necessary, but it does, uh, does help a little bit just to stick these underneath these Lark's head knots here. But you know what? I think I can do it without a body pin. I'm just gonna shove it right through there. Uh, it's definitely easier with a body pin, but. So, see what I did there? I'll bring it closer. I tucked the end under the two, the lark heads here. So that way it's just nice and it's not gonna come out here and it looks nice. So this is the back, by the way, in case you. So yeah, I just lift them a little bit and shove it right through. And this is very easy if you have a crochet hook. 
a little bit easier if you have a bobby pin. I don't have one right here, so. Anyways, you just pull that through, and there you go. And if your strings are too long there, you can just chop them, trim them. But there you go. There we have it. Finito. Let's put a plant in there. It's crazy. My playlist was the perfect length, and I did not try to do that. I just finished. So here we go. Let's see this little guy in here. Oh, so cute. <laughs> okay, guys. I hope you enjoyed the macrame class. Um, you are going to be able to watch this again afterwards. And I'm going to send out those emails right now so you can wa um, see the step-by-step -step and get the knots if you missed anything and that kind of thing. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Yay, because I certainly did. Um, yeah, and be on the lookout. We're going to be doing another class in March. And we're going to go a little bit, not more difficult, but a bigger scale. So we're going to be making a wall hanging. This one's a wall hanging, but it's very small. Um, the one that we're making is going to be about, I think, two feet wide. So this is eight inches. It's going to be about yay big. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, I'll send out an email with that if you're interested. Um, yay, thank you all for joining me. This was so fun. Awesome. I'm going to go... Send me pictures of your finished plant hangers. I would love to see. Um, send me pics through email or um, you can tag me on Instagram or on Facebook. I would love to see. I hope you guys had fun. Okay, bye.